Hello friends, in our last session we saw that how national income is measured with the help of output method. Now in this session we are going to see how national income is measured by income method. This method of measuring national income is also known as a factor cost method. Why it is known as a factor cost method? It is because under this method national income is measured by adding up the money income received by all factors of production that is land, labor, capital and entrepreneur in the form of rent, wages, interest and profit. So by adding up the money income received by all factors of production during a given period of time, here national income is measured therefore it is known as a factor cost method see this method estimates national income from the distribution side this method estimates national income from the distribution side it means when we measure national income by income method we come to know how national income is distributed among the four factors of production land labor capital and entrepreneur in the form of rent wages interest and profit so we get idea about the distribution of income whether it is distributed equally or inequally what is the degree of inequality that we come to know when it is measured through income method. Therefore, this estimation is from distribution side. According to this method, the income payments received by all citizens of a country in a particular year are added up. That is, incomes that accrue to all factors of production by the way of rents, wages, interest and profits are all added together. But income received in the form of transfer, transfer payments are ignored. So, all the citizens of a country are getting income in the form of rent, wages, interest and profits. Some of people are the suppliers of natural resources and therefore they are getting income in the form of rent. Some of the people are supplying their labor and therefore they are getting income in the form of wages. Some of the people are capital owners, they are getting income in the form of interest. And some of the people are entrepreneurs, they are getting income in the form of profits. Some of the people are earning income in the form of rent, wages, interest and profits together that is called mixed income. Some of the people's income is mixed because of their income is mixture of rent, wages, interest and profit. For example, self-employed people, their income is a mixture of rent, wages, interest and profit. 
Why? Because of they are supplying their resources to themselves. So they need not to pay rent to any other person. They are working as a laborer, as a worker in their own business. Therefore, they need not to pay wages to any other person. They are using their own capital and therefore they need not to pay interest to any other person or any other financial institution. And they are working as an entrepreneur in their own business. So whatever the profit they will earn in their business, that too is the part of their income. So in such a way, the self-employed people's income is aggregate of rent, wages, interests and profits. So in such a way, when the rent, wages, interest, profit, mixed income and net income from abroad, when these things are added together, we get national income from income method. So this is the formula used to measure national income by the way of in income method. R stands for rent, W stands for wages, I stands for interest, P stands for profit, M I stands for mixed income and here X minus M stands for net income from abroad that too is added to the national income in such a way it is the method income method is the method under which national income is measured by adding up the income earned by all factors of production in the form of rent wages interest and profit during a period, given period of time. So, this is the income method. One more point that must be discussed here, income received in the form of transfer payments, income received in the form of transfer payments should be ignored. What is mean by transfer payment? The transfer payment or transfer income is that which is earned without participating in productive activity. For example, scholarship. Students get scholarship, but they are not participating in productive activity. Scholarship is a financial help rendered by government to them, those who are economically weak, socially backward. So whatever the amount of money students have received in the form of scholarship that is called transfer income that is not added to the national income. Why? Because of that is not resulting in a real output that is not contributing in the real output. Neither the goods are produced nor the services are produced here. So such type of transfer incomes, scholarships, old age pensions, unemployment allowances, these are not added to the national income, these are transfer incomes, as well as gifts, donations, these are also transfer incomes and these are not added to the national income. Why? Because of due to such transfer income, the real output 
of economy doesn't increases that is not contributing anything else to the national output therefore that is not added to the national income so in such a way how the data is collected see the data pertaining to income are obtained from different sources for example income tax returns reports books of accounts as well as estimates for small income so whatever the data is required for measuring national income through the income method that is obtained through these sources gnp can be treated as the sum of factor incomes earned as a result of undertaking economic activity on the part of resources and owners reflected in the production of the total output of goods and services during any given period of time <clears throat> so here we take into account only that income which arises due to undertaking economic activity if a teacher teaching to his own son sorry this is not a relative that this is not a related example <coughs> so here we can see the formula now we are going to see the precautions which we will have to take while estimating national income by income method transfer incomes or transfer payments should be ignored should be ignored they are not added to the national income as i talked as i told you that scholarships gifts donations charity old age pension unemployment allowances these are the transfer incomes why because of these are earned without participating in productive activity nothing is produced by students nothing is produced by old age people but still they are getting certain amount of money these are the social welfare schemes and the income earned through these schemes should not be added to the national income because of that does not result in real output all unpaid services like services of housewife a teacher teaching to his child should be ignored because of these are unpaid services these are not exchanged with money its value cannot be measured therefore that is not added to national income any income from sale of second hand goods like car houses etc should be ignored why because of these goods are second hand means these are not the part of current years output and therefore their value should not be added to national income income from sale of shares bonds should be ignored why when we are selling shares or bonds or debentures here we are only transferring the ownership nothing is new produced there these shares bonds and debentures are produced in some previous years when they were issued first time their values are added to the national income of that year when they were issued first time now we are only transferring the ownership here this is like a second hand good so we should ignore the income earned by person by selling shares or bonds 
Next one, revenue received by the government through direct access should be ignored as it is only a transfer of income. Revenue received by the government through the direct taxes like income tax, wealth tax, property tax. So whatever is earned by government through the direct taxes, that is the transfer payment. Without producing good or service, this income is earned by government. This income is not resulting in real output. Therefore, it should be ignored. Undistributed profits of companies should be taken into account. Though it is undistributed, that is the part of the current year's profit. जरी ते अनडिस्ट्रीब्युटेड असेल त्याचं वितरण झालेलं नसेल तरी सुद्धा ते चालू वर्षाचा प्रॉफिटचा पार्ट आहे तो दॅट मस्ट बी ऍडेड टू द नॅशनल इन्कम नेक्स्ट वन द इम्प्युटेड व्हॅल्यू ऑफ प्रोडक्शन केप्ट फॉर सेल्फ कन्झम्शन द पार्ट ऑफ आउटपुट विच इज केप्ट फॉर सेल्फ कन्झम्शन इट्स इम्प्युटेड व्हॅल्यू मस्ट बी ऍडेड टू द नॅशनल इन्कम वन मोर थिंग imputed rent of owner occupied house the houses occupied by us its imputed rental value must be added to the national income apan ja gharamade ratoy tyacha rent ek andajit rent kadun national income madhe add kela pahije parantu to apan add karat nahi bichara sudha get nahi jar ka samja स्वतःच्या घरामध्ये न राहता आपण कोणाच्या तरी रेंटच्या घरामध्ये राहिला असतो तर त्याला आपल्या रेंट रेंट द्यावा लागला असता ते त्याचं इन्कम म्हणून नॅशनल इन्कममध्ये ॲड झालं असतं त्या व्यक्तीचं पण इथं आपण स्वतःच स्वतःला एक सर्व्हिस देतोय तर त्याचं एक इम्प्युटेड रेंटल व्हॅल्यू आपण नॅशनल इन्कममध्ये ॲड करायला पाहिजे पण सहसा तसं होत असलेलं आपल्याला दिसून येत नाही सो दीज आर द सेव्हन प्रिकॉशन्स विच वी मस्ट टेक वायल estimating national income by income method one more time i would like to repeat all the points transfer incomes or transfer transfer payments should be ignored the unpaid services should be ignored income from second hand goods should be ignored income from sale of shares and bonds should be ignored revenue received by government through the direct taxes should be ignored the undistributed profits of companies should be added to the national income and the imputed value of self occupied house as well as the imputed value of the output kept for self consumption should be added to the national income okay some useful information about the national income is given uh, about the income method is given here In India the National Income Committee of the Central Statistical Organization CSO the responsibility of measuring national income rests with the CSO Central Statistical Organization so this CSO uses the income method for adding up the income arising from trade transport professional and liberal arts professional and liberal arts public administration and domestic services this method is used in india not for measuring national income which arises from agri sector industry sector but it is used to measure national income which arises from service sector. transportation trade professional and liberal arts public administration and domestic services the income which arises through these activities is measured through the income method so that's all in this session in the next session we will discuss the third and last method of measuring national income that is expenditure method till then goodbye hello friends 
In the last session, we have discussed the income method of measuring national income. Now, in this session, we are going to see the expenditure method of measuring national income. See, this method of measuring national income is also known as the outlay method. According to this method, how national income is measured? See. The national income is measured by adding up the expenditure made by people of the country on purchase of different kind of goods and services during a year. How national income is measured? Here we are aggregating the expenditure made by people on purchase of different kind of goods and services. The households and individual people purchase the consumable goods. The individuals, individual producers and firms purchase the capital goods. So whatever the expenditure is incurred by households, by firms, by, gov by government, by foreign sector on purchase of goods and services, that all expenditure is added here to measure the national income. So the total expenditure incurred by the society in a particular year is added together. Income can be spent either on consumable goods or on capital goods. So, here we are taking into account the expenditure made by people on purchase of goods and services. It means we are taking into account the values of goods and services. If suppose I spent rupees 100 on purchase of this pen, it means the value of this pen is rupees 100. So either I am taking into account my expenditure or we are taking into account the value of this pain or we are taking into account the income earned by its producer each and everything is equal the income earned by its producer is 100 the value of product is also 100, 100. and the expenditure made by me on purchase of this pain is also rupees 100 so either you measure national income by the way of expenditure method, by the way of output method, or by the way of income method. It must be same. There will be no difference in national income. Whichever method you use for measuring national income, by that method national income should be same. Here, <coughs> we can say that by the expenditure method, national income is measured by aggregating total expenditure by the society on the purchase of goods and services in a particular year. The formula is given, national income is equal to C plus I plus Z plus X minus M plus R minus E, where C stands for private consumption expenditure what is mean by private consumption expenditure private consumption expenditure means the expenditure made by individuals and households on purchase of consumable goods like television sets refrigerators washing machines food grains vegetables fruits telephone mobile phone laptop computer pen notebook bags specs whatever Consumable goods are purchased by the household sector. That expenditure made by them is added to the national income. As well as the expenditure made by us on medical services, on educational services, all these are added to the national income. That is called consumption, private consumption expenditure. Next one, gross 
domestic private investment expenditure i stands for private investment expenditure what is mean by investment expenditure the expenditure made on purchase of capital goods like machines factory buildings tools equipments raw material vehicles fuel the expenditure made by firms business firms on purchase of these capital goods is known as a investment expenditure that to add it to the national income here investment expenditure means the value of capital goods purchased by business firms here consumption expenditure means what the value of consumable goods and services purchased by private sector now the third one item added to the national income is government's consumption as well as investment expenditure just like us just like our households the government also incurs consumption expenditure as well as investment expenditure the expenditure made by government on administrative services like law maintaining law and order defense education health this is what this is the consumption expenditure made by the government the expenditure made by government on making payments salaries of government servants is a consumption expenditure there are a lot of teachers working in the government schools government colleges there are a lot of people working in government uh, hospitals doctors nurses compounders ward boys technicians are working in government hospitals so whatever the expenditure made by government on making their their salaries for maintaining law and order we have police administration there are lot of police inspectors are working for maintaining the law and order so whatever expenditure is incurred by government on making their salaries on running these departments that is called the consumption expenditure of government that to add it to the national income one more thing government's and investment expenditure the expenditure made by government on railway bridges dams canals which are used by the business sector for production of goods and 